Hi, today we want to talk about figure drawing. Now, there's various different ways of drawing the figure, but we want to give you three different exercises on how you can improve your structure, your gesture, and your volumes. First, we want to look at some bony landmarks on the skeleton. Now, most important for the gesture of a human position are the shoulders and the pelvis. On the shoulders, we can observe the clavicles and the line created by them. On the pelvis, we have these two little bumps. You can feel them on yourself as well, and they're usually very visible on a nude model. These are called the anterior superior iliac spine points, abbreviated ASIS. We can use these ASIS points, much like the clavicles, to create a line of the pelvis. The body in movement will now shift in different directions, shifting these two lines. We can observe this and transfer this in our drawing. We can use these bony structures of the clavicles and shoulder to observe the angle between the shoulders and the sternum, which is this bony part here on the front of the chest. These two will mostly be in a 90 degree angle to each other. This is going to be helpful in our later exercise. On the pelvis, again, we can connect these two ASI points to a line. When we talk about gesture, we need to talk about the center of gravity. If I take this plumb line, we can observe the center of my gravity as I am standing here in front of you. If I take this at the pit of my neck, which is the center of my chest here, you can see that the weight is now at the center between my two feet. If I shift my weight like this, you can see that the weight has now shifted onto my left foot. We call this position a contrapposto. This is because my ribcage and pelvis are now in counter position to each other. We can observe this if we're looking at the angles as I had just described. As I go into the contrapposto, notice how my ribcage is now tilting towards the left, whereas my pelvis is tilting towards the right. These two movements are countering each other. Thus we have a contrapposto, a counter position. With this information, we can basically draw a simple stick figure that is a bit more informed by our information of the gesture. The first thing I want to try to do is find that center of gravity. This was the plumb line that I had just used in front of my body. Now, if I want to create that contrapposto, right, I'm going to look at the angle of the rib cage, for instance, first. Maybe the rib cage is doing something like this. If I want the contrapposto, I know that the pelvis is going to do the opposite now. Something like that. Having just observed the plumb line shifting the weight to my left foot, I know that the area where the hip is raised is going to lead me to my left foot. So this will be the standing leg, the weight-bearing leg. I can now add little details that suggest a figure. This is a very simple sketch, of course, but it can help you get the first understanding of the gesture of a figure. Now we have observed the tilting of rib cage and pelvis in a gesture and movement of the body. This is basically our one-dimensional approach. Let's think about the second dimension. If we look at our skeleton, we have just described these two planes. However, if we turn our skeleton to the side, we can observe that pelvis and rib cage also have a lean to them. The rib cage is generally leaning backwards, while the pelvis seems to be leaning forwards. We can use this information to create a second dimension in our simple figure drawing. We can think about this by observing a cylinder. We can observe how the form changes depending on if the cylinder is pointing towards or away from us. Depending on the position, you will either see the top side of the plane or the underside of the plane. If I am holding the cylinder like this, you can see it is leaning back, much like the rib cage. If I tilt it this way, it is leaning forward, much like the pelvis. You can also see these black contour lines that I've created. If I'm tilting it forward like this, like the pelvis, you should see a smiley. If I lean it backwards, like the rib cage, you should see an upside down smiley. We can again use this information in our figure drawing to suggest things leaning forward or backwards. This could look something like this. Let's start by drawing a cylinder for the rib cage. 
we're going to have a half circle for the top. We'll have our sides, and we're probably going to see the lower side opened, like so. We can now think about the connection into the pelvis, which we'll see the upper side of. Finally, we can think about the connection with the head, where we'll probably also see the underside of. This simplified drawing of cylinders is going to help us understand how the volumes of the body are leaning forwards or backwards, much like we've discussed the tilting side to side. Another way of thinking about the volumes of the human body are in form of boxes. If we replace the volume of the pelvis with a box shape, it might look something like this. We would have a forward leaning box shape. The ribcage, however, we have learned, leans back. It might look something like this, where we can see the underside of the plane. The box shape is going to allow us to draw in three dimensions. This will allow us to also show turning of the body, which we haven't been able to do with these two steps prior. In drawing, this box shape could look something like this. I can use the angle of the sternum to inform myself about the diagonal of the ribcage. Using some simple perspective lines, I can create the illusion of a box for the ribcage, and I can open up the box for the pelvis. Again, for the head, we can also include a simple kind of box shape that we would see the underside of. We can now transfer these concepts of tilt, lean, and turn into our figure drawing. If we use these designs and combine them into our gesture drawings or figure drawings, we can use these to create volume and spatial relationships of the human body. These are exercises, and you don't have to draw this way, but they can inform your practice and help you thinking about the body as a three-dimensional object in space. So maybe take some time to practice these movements. You can also practice these box shapes to think about how certain figures would look like from the other side. This is going to train your style of drawing from imagination. I hope these little exercises will be helpful for your practice. Continue trying and have fun. Okay. <laughs> so weird. <laughs>